Book of Daniel, chapters 10 through 12, like some English Septuagint. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, an oracle was shown to Daniel, who was called by the name Belshazzar, and the vision was true, and the oracle and its great complexity will be understood. And as to the oracle, I perceived in it in a vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was in the process of mourning for three weeks. I did not eat pleasant-tasting bread. Neither meat nor wine entered into my mouth. I did not anoint myself with oil until I had completed three weeks of days. And it happened on the twenty-fourth day of the first month that I was on the bank of the great river, which is the Tigris. And I raised my eyes and looked, and look, there was a person clothed in fine linen and girded, with fine linen on his loins, and there was a light from the middle of him. And his mouth was like the sea, and his face like the appearance of a gleaming light. And his eyes were like torches of fire, and his arms were feet like gleaming bronze. And the sound of his talking was like the sound of a roaring crowd. And I, Daniel, saw this great vision, but the people who were with me did not see the vision. And great fear fell over them, and they fled in haste, and I was left alone, and I saw this great vision, and there was not left in me any strength, and look, my spirit in me turned into a state of distress, and I had no strength. <coughs> And I did not hear the sound of his talking, for I had fallen upon my face to the land. And look, a hand came forward to me and raised me up on my knees and on the soles of my feet. And he said to me, Daniel, a man who has received mercy, you are to understand the decrees that I am declaring to you. Now stand in your place, for I am sent to you. And as he spoke with me concerning this oracle, I stood trembling. And he said to me, Do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your face to examine and to understand and to make yourself low before the Lord your God, your petition was heard. And I have come because of your petition. Now the commander of the king of Persia opposed me for twenty-one days. And look, Michael, one of the commanders of the First Order, came to help me. And I left him there with the commander of the King of Persia. And he said to me, I have come to show you what will come upon your people during the last days. For there is still time for days. And as he spoke with me, these things I directed my face toward the land and was silent. And look, as it were the likeness of a hand of a human touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and talked and said to the one standing before me, <clears throat> Lord, indeed, when the vision was turned back upon my side against me, there was not even any strength upon me. And how will it be possible for the servant to speak with the Lord? And I have become faint, and no strength is in me, nor any spirit. And he continued to, and touched me, the one like the appearance of a human, and he strengthened me. And he said to me, Human, you are one having received mercy. Do not fear. Be in good health, act like a man, and be strong. And he spoke with me, and I became strong and said, Let my Lord speak, for he has strengthened me. And he said to me, 
Do you know why I have come to you? And now we'll return to content with the commander of the king of Persia. And I will go forth and look, the commander of the Greeks will come in. However, I will show you the first things listed in the register of truth. And there was no one who was helping me against those beings except Michael, the angel. And in the first year of King Cyrus, he spoke to me to strengthen me and to make me act valiantly. And now I have come to impart the truth to you. Look, three kings have arisen in Persia, and a fourth will arise with great wealth beyond all, and his power by means of his riches. He will rise up against every king of the Greeks, and a powerful king will be raised, and he will exercise power over an extensive empire, and he will act just as he wishes. And when he has arisen, his kingdom will be shattered and divided up toward the four winds of the heavens, not according to his strength, nor according to his powerful dominion that he exercised for his kingdom will be removed. And he will teach others these things. And he will strengthen the kingdom of Egypt. But one of the rulers will overpower him, and his dynasty will rule with a great dynasty. And toward the end of those years, he will lead them. And the king of Egypt will come into the northern kingdom to enact covenants. And he will not prevail, for his strength will not stand firm. And his strength will grow weak along with the strength of those accompanying him. But he will endure for some time. And a shoot from his root will arise in place of himself. And a king of the north will come with his power and his strength. And he will bring about tumult. And he will prevail. And their gods he will overturn, along with their molten images and their hosts, along with the objects of their desires, the silver and the gold. They will carry into captivity away into Egypt, and there will be a year of relief for the king of the north. Then the king of Egypt will enter into the kingdom for some days, and he will return to his land. And his son at the time will become provoked, and he will bring together the collection of a mighty multitude, and he will enter against it, laying it waste. He will pass through and return, and he will become exceedingly provoked. Then the king of Egypt will become angry, and he will go out and make war with the king of the north, and he will establish a great crowd, and the gathering will be given over into the hands of his enemy when the multitude will be taken away and his heart will be lifted up and he will trouble many but there shall not at all be a reason to fear and the king of the north will return and he will bring together a greater multitude from the city than the previous one toward the end of an appointed period of time and then he will enter into it against him with a great army and with great resources. Then in those appointed times, intentions will be directed against the king of Egypt, and he shall rebuild the things that have fallen of your people. And there will be a rising up for the purpose of causing the prophecy to stand, but they will stumble. Then the kings of the north will attack, and he shall return with his armed forces, and he will take the fortified city and the forces of the king of Egypt will be stopped along with his military. And there will not be to him any strength for opposing him. And the one who comes on against him will act according to his will. And there will not be any more who oppose him. And he will stand in the territory, and he will bring to completion all of those things by his hands. Then he will set his face to attack his work, with force, and he will execute agreements with him, and he will give to him a daughter for the purpose of destroying it. But he will not consent 
and so it will not come about. And then he will set his face toward the sea, and he will take many, and he will return wrath for their disgrace, by an oath according to his disgrace. He shall turn his face for the purpose of gaining control over this territory, but he will stumble and perish, and he will no longer be a factor. And a shoot of royalty will stand up from his root for an uprising, a man who beats down the honor of a king. But in the latter days he will be crushed, but not in rage nor in battle. And there will stand up in his place a contemptible man, and royal honor will not be accorded him, and he will come in unexpectedly, and the king will prevail in distribution of his land, and he will firmly shatter the shattered forces before him, and he will act with deception after a covenant, and a people have come together with him, and overcome a strong nation by a very small people. Suddenly he will lay waste a city, and he will act concerning the things which his fathers did. Nor the fathers of his fathers acted. He will give plunder and spoils and material goods to them. And he will set his mind against the fortified city, but his plans and intrigues will come to nothing. Then his might and his heart will be aroused against the king of Egypt by a huge army and the king of Egypt will be provoked into battle with a very exceedingly strong army, but he will not prevail, for a sound plan will be devised against him. Then his solicitors will consume him, and they shall turn him back, and they will pass by, and he will lay waste, but many wounded men will fall. Then the two kings will dine alone together, and they will eat at the same table and they will speak deceptively to each other, but they will not prosper any farther. For there is yet a consummation for an appointed time. Then he will return to his territory with great wealth, and his heart will be set against the Holy Covenant. He will act, and he will return to his country at an appointed time, and he will go into Egypt but as it was the first time, so also this last time will not be. And the Romans will thrust him out and arrogantly rebuke him. And he will return and be made angry against the Holy Covenant. And he will act and turn around. And he will set his mind upon them because they had forsaken the Holy Covenant. Then forces from him will stand up and pollute the revered holy places and they will take away the sacrifice, and they will set up an abomination that causes desolation. And because of sins against the covenant, they will defile by a hardened people. But the people who know these things will prevail and will act, and those who are discerning from among the people will act with understanding for many. But they will come against the sword. They will continue in it, and in captivity, by plundering during a period of time, they will be defiled. And whenever they are broken, they will gather a little strength. And there will be many gathered to them near a city, and many as it were in flattery. And from those who understand, they shall take care for themselves, for cleansing themselves, and for the consummation, and for them to be chosen, and for being cleansed, until an appointed time of consummation, for there is yet an appointed time for a season. And the king will act accordingly to his will, and he will be provoked to anger, and he will be exalted above every god, and against the god of gods he will utter excessive arrogance. And he will prosper along with many until the appointed wrath is accomplished for him for a conclusion in coming. And he will have no concern for the gods of his fathers, and he will have no care with any desire of a woman, because he will be exalted in every way possible, and powerful nations will be under him, and he will move in its place, 
even a God whom his fathers did not know, he will honor with gold and silver, precious stone, and with desirably costly objects. He will act concerning cities and for a powerful stronghold, and he will come with a strange God whom he acknowledges. He will increase his influence, and it will gain dominion over him greatly, and the territory he will divide up as a gift. And during the time of the consummation, the king of Egypt will engage in fierce horned combat with him, and the king of the north will be furious with him, using chariots and many horses and using many ships, and he will enter into the territory of Egypt. And he will come on into my territory. Many will be entrapped, but these will be saved from his hand, Edom and Moab and the chief sons of Ammon. And he will send his hand among the lands and the territory of Egypt. There will be no one in it who is delivered. And he will exercise power over the place of gold and the place of silver and over all the desired wealth of Egypt and Put and Ethiopia Put and Ethiopia Ut, Put and Ethiopia will be among his multitude and a report will trouble him from the east and north and he will leave in a fierce rage and with a sword to destroy and kill many and he will set up his tent at the time between the seas and the favored holy mountain. And the time of his end will come, and there will be no one who helps him. And toward that territory, Michael, the great angel who stands over the sons of your people, will go by, that they will be a day of affliction, of a kind that has never been when there were nations until the day. And in that day all of the people, whoever may be found inscribed in the document, will be lifted up. And many of those sleeping in the breath of the earth will arise, some unto eternal life, but some unto reproach, and some to dispersion and eternal disgrace. And those who are prudent will shine like the luminaries of the heavens, and those who learn and master my words like the stars of the heavens, for the eternity of eternity. But you, Daniel, keep the secret decree and seal up the document until the time of the end, while the masses rage on and the earth is filled with injustice. And I, Daniel, looked, and look, two others were standing, one on one side of the river and one on the other side. And I said to the one clothed with fine linen above the river, when therefore will be the conclusion of the things you have said to me, of those astonishing things and the purification of these things? And I heard the one clothed with fine linen who was above the waters of one river until the appointed time of the end and he raised his right hand and his left hand toward the heavens, and he swore by the God who lives for eternity. The completion of the hands of the release of the holy people is for an appointed season and set times and half a time. And all these things will be consummated. And I heard, but I did not understand concerning this appointed season. So I said, Lord, what is the meaning of the matter? And about whom are these puzzling assertions? And he said to me, Depart, Daniel, for the divine decrees are hidden and sealed up until many should be tested and sanctified. And the sinners will continue to sin, and all the sinners will fall, fail to understand. But those who are discerning will give heed from when the sacrifice is taken away during all that time and when the abomination causing desolation was prepared to be set up 1,290 days blessed is the one who stands fast and gathers
1,335 days. And you go, rest yourself, for there are yet days and hours into the fulfillment of the consummation. And he should give you rest, and you will arise in your glory at the consummation of days. The end of the book of Daniel. Lexum, English Septuagint.